Greetings, welcome back to CS195, web development. This is week five, CSS fonts. Last piece, using multiple CSS classes. All right, so this lesson is gonna go over how you can actually have more than one class on an element. So pretty much this whole week, we've been just learning about different ways to modify the font. And then we talked about inheritance a little bit, but this time, we're just gonna go over a little extra theory on how you can then add these font properties to multiple elements, to multiple classes, and show how that works. So with that, our success criteria is adding multiple class to a single tag with the proper attribute and in the correct location of HTML. So let's watch the video first, and then we'll go ahead and test this out. We've managed to do a lot so far with the selectors that we've seen in CSS, selecting elements by tag name, by ID, and by class name. Let's review those for a second in this web page. This web page is all about donuts, and it has a heading, uh, paragraphs, and some of the paragraphs are short one-liner facts. The CSS starts with a rule about selecting all the P tags on the page and giving them a font family of sans serif. I'll change this to monospace so you can see everything it selects. See it? The next rule selects whatever element has an ID of donut header. And we know it's looking for an ID because it starts with this hash symbol. Since the ID is pretty descriptive, it sounds to me like it's selecting the big heading at the top and changing its font. But I'll just scroll down and confirm that the H1 has the ID. Yep, there it is. The final rule selects all the elements that have the fact class name. And we know it's looking for class names because it starts with a dot. To figure out which elements have that class name, I can either look at what the rule is doing, adding a top and bottom border and some padding, or I can look through my HTML for the class name. And I can see the class name is on this paragraph and this paragraph. The two paragraphs are the one-liner facts, and that's why they have the border. Class names are great because they let us use the same styles across multiple elements, but there's even more we can do with class names. That's what I'll show you now. So we have a web page about donuts, but donuts are really not that healthy for you. They might be one of the least healthy things for you. And they're also kind of addictive because of all that sugar. So if we're gonna have a page talking about them, we should probably warn people about their unhealthiness. How about we make this top fact red to really get across that it's a warning? How would we do that? Well, we could start with adding a color property to the fact CSS rule. See what that does. Okay, but that made both of the facts red, and that second fact isn't a warning, it's just a spelling thing. So we don't want it to be red. We could add an ID, but then if we wanted to color other things that were warnings later and add more warnings, then we'd have to keep adding IDs and rules for those IDs. In a case like this, the best thing to do is to add another class to the P tag. Browsers actually let us add as many classes as we want to a single tag. To do that, we just put our cursor after the last class name, put a space, and then write a new class name like warning. Now we can make a rule for warning and move this color property into the rule. And now the top fact is red and the second one is it. Beautiful. We can put the, the class name on more elements like before. Maybe we want to color the, the text, the strong text, deep fried. We want to color that red because deep fried stuff are often associated with being unhealthy. So we can just add class equals warning, also red. Now notice that the this warning fact here has that red color and it also still has the border top, border bottom. And that's what happens when you use multiple classes. The browsers will look at all the rules that apply to them and apply all of the relevant styles. We should be careful about using just colors for conveying meaning because some people are colorblind. There are some people who can barely tell the difference between red and black, and maybe you're one of them. So let's change our class to make it more noticeable for everyone. We'll change this color to a background color because anybody can tell that something has a background color. That's pretty low contrast, that red and black. And contrast is also important to make our page readable to everyone. So let's just make the color white. Okay, now we have high contrast and a red background for people who can see red. And since we used a class, both our warning texts have the same styles. 
Now, thanks to the flexibility of CSS classes, we can save the whole world from donuts. All right. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. I have something similar to what she has set up. I'll make it so you can actually read it though. So again, we'll set up everything. I have a class all that's giving all of these a background of red. So all of the divs have a class of all. Then one of them has an ID of one and that's why you may or may not be able to see this. I'm going to make it white like she did so you can see it. <clears throat> and there we go. So we, we can see that a little bit better. What we're going to do now, though, is just add a class. We've already created it. Remember, we already know that dot creates a class. So dot two. And we're actually going to give it a color of green, right? We're going to give it a color of green. So. Well, the thing we need to do is actually give it the class. So remember what she said, just go in here, hit a space, and type in two. And then again, you can probably barely see it, but this did indeed change to green. And if we wanted to give this one also, and now both of these are green. So these have the class of all. They all have the class of all, all of these inner um, child elements of the one labeled ID size. They all have a class of all, but only two of them have a class of two, right? So I want I want them all to be red, but I only want two of them to be green. This is one way to do it. And as she pointed out, there's a bunch of other ways you can do this. Um, if I wanted to also then make this one be green, I could give it a class equals two. And now this became green as well. So you can, the ability to have this on is I can have, I can use green. Whenever I want to do green, I just give it a class of two. When I, whenever I want to have a red background, I can give it a class of all. And then therefore, if you want both, you just add both of them. Do again, notice this is a space. This is a space right here. So um, it's not a comma. You need to add a space there and you can just keep spacing on until you add as many as you need. That's all there really is to adding multiple classes. There's a challenge for this. And then we'll see you next lesson.